Okay, it's six o'clock. Um, uh, this is a meeting of the Committee of uh, Government Operations and Ordinances. Uh, I'm calling this uh, committee to this meeting to order. Um, we're going to take up uh, at this time uh, the issue of um, historic districts and what the city should be doing with respect to um, those issues um, and a discussion establishing a Laconia Historic District Commission. I I'm going to exercise my role as the chairmanship to make a few opening comments um, and then we'll open it up to comments, brief comments from the council. There's a lot of people here and I want to hear from everybody with respect to this. Um, my comments are that I don't think that there's anyone at this table. I don't think that there's anyone on the city council. Um, and I don't think there's a whole lot of people who are not in support of opposing uh, the demolition of St. Joseph's Church. Um, we all recognize what a cultural and historic icon that church is, how beautiful it is, how the community, both Catholic and non-Catholic, um, have relied on it, used it, benefited from it for decades and decades. I don't think any of that um, is in dispute. Uh, those are my opening comments. Uh, I make those because I've had some brief discussions um, when I arrived late for the meeting over at the mill regarding this, um, that I have some reservations as to whether the establishment of an historic district commission um, is the appropriate way to go at this time um, or um, that it will reap any benefit at all. Um, those are my opening comments. I'll keep it to that. Um, if uh, Councillor Cheney or Councillor Husband would like to uh, make a brief opening statement, I'll certainly allow you that opportunity. Go ahead. Uh, well, th thank you, Councillor Browns. I certain, certainly echo your, your desires in regards to the St. Joseph's Church. I think there are more questions than answers currently right now. I think there are a number of ideas on the table as to how we can preserve or prevent this uh, church from being demolished. I think this is one idea that um, I'm not convinced it's not a viable option. So I'm anxious to, to dig into this and find out, um, though it may not be the perfect solution to uh, this situation, um, I, I think it should be fully vetted and every attempt being made to prevent the demolition. So uh, I'm glad we're looking into this. Well, I, I, I agree. I'm, I'm all on board with that. Sure. Well, very briefly, uh, as I asked last week uh, that the manager attempt to find out the, the cost of demolition uh, and the, uh, and the uh, possible purchaser of the property with an eye towards uh, perhaps finding a way to save the church uh, uh, by dealing with the, with the demolition costs, if, if we could do that. I think as it relates, or as I relate to a historic district commission, I think that's a separate issue from the church at this point. I think we need to move expeditiously to try and prevent the de destruction of that church. Um, if at, at a subsequent point we determine that a historic uh, district is, is useful for the city or important for the city, it certainly deserves our time and effort. But I think, for me at least, I'd like to see most of our effort right now going to uh, dealing with the church. Okay. Thank you. Um, as a um, uh, preliminary matter, um, I had uh, talked to the uh, city manager uh, last week and again today with respect to um, what it would take to put together an historic commission with an historic district 
and what the necessary uh, steps that would be necessary. <coughs> he has um, written me a memo dated today, um, and we're going to make that available for members of the public uh, should you choose to look at it. But there are some uh, statutory requirements that the city must follow in order to establish an historic uh, commission and district in the first instance. Uh, I won't outline them th at that time because I'm anxious. We've already wasted almost five and a half minutes, and, I'm, and I want to uh, uh, hear from members of the public. So with that said, I'm going to open this up to members of the public. I'd, I'm not going to put a time limit on you, but there's a lot of you who want to speak. Uh, we really want to do, do address as many people as possible um, and get to some kind of a um, resolution about how we might proceed in the future. Uh, so uh, with that in mind, come on up. <laughs> this may not be as eloquent. I don't have anything prepared completely, but um, to speak to uh, Mr. Cheney's uh, note about um, the separate um, ideas or separate things going on here. I would agree with that. They're separate, but they're parallel. So um, I would urge the council, the committee here to dig deep and really consider the idea of historic district council uh, commission um, because it's not just St. Joe's. St. Joe's is the, is the catalyst really that has thrown us into this particular thinking. Um, and the idea that to lose St. Joe's and the, um, the huge gaping hole uh, that could be sitting there in this city's character uh, isn't just St. Joe's. It could, be, it could be the train station, honestly. It could be the Belknap Mill. It could be the Buzzle Mill. I mean, it, it could be the Buzzle Home. And I could go on for hundreds of years about how many historical buildings we have in this city that may not equal the beauty of St. Joe's, but they equal the importance in both historical and cultural. And um, a historic district commission, uh, granted I will admit I've done a lot of reading in the last two and a half, three <coughs> weeks on historic district commissions. I've spoken to an awful lot of people at New Hampshire uh, Division of Historical Resources and the Han New Hampshire Preservation Alliance um, I've, and uh, historical preservationists in the state. Um, historic district commissions come with some restrictions that uh, those commissions put into place, regulations, but uh, in all cases, in most cases, they are positive for the city as a whole, both economically, culturally, um, educationally. They are important and can help a city. And, and after reading the master plan, and that you have all um, started to put forth as of 2018, it is clear that a historic district commission, to me anyway, it is clear that a historic district commission is also parallel to the city's master plan and your thoughts on economic development and economic growth and family growth in the city. So I would encourage you to review the, the I'm sure you do it every day, review the master plan, review your zoning ordinances as well. Um, maybe not every day, maybe not every day. Um, but review your or zoning ordinance as well. I have taken a good look at those as well. And, and it's clear in there that, that historic preservation is important to, to the leadership of this city. So um, a historic district commission is not um, a far step in what your thoughts and your, your um, you know, wishes for, for through legislation, basically, that you're already kind of considering for this city. So again, it's a strong urging. I know that um, after some discussion recently that it may be a challenge, um, but there's several people here today that know I enjoy one. And um, I'll do my absolute best to speak with you about everything I possibly can and hope that my opinion can sway you into a way of historic district commission. And I, I want you to know that I'm listening. I'm not opposed to historic district commission per se. Um, I guess I'll, I'll ask you a question. Sure. Uh, are you aware, uh, and I assume you are, maybe you're not, I don't know, 
uh, with the efforts that we've done recently in terms of performance zoning and how and what we're doing for really uh, all of the guts of the city of Laconia from Belmont up to Mac I keep calling it McIntyre Circle, but that, that's because I'm right. an old guy. <laughs> that's all right. We'll take that. It's historic. Um, I am aware of it. I do not. I will never claim to understand all the RSAs, all the legal, all the in information without talking it out with someone deeply enough. But I have learned about it a little bit, and it, I, it's. It, it, I guess I would have to learn a little bit more to see the connection or the disconnection maybe that you might be seeing. I, I don't know if I'm seeing a disconnection or not. I know that what we've done is we've tried to create what we call performance zoning um, in the district that I just uh, outlined in St. Joe's would fall right within, within, that, within that performance zone um, in an effort to encourage developers who've got good ideas, who might not necessarily meet all the requirements of the yes. zoning boards or uh, the planning boards to propose a plan um, that the city could, that the planning board in the city could consider um, and allow the developer to do based upon certain conditions. And I don't know if that conflicts with an historic division, a district, I'm not sure it does. Uh, but I don't know the answer to that, and I'm just making you aware of that. Sure. No, I, I appreciate that. Um, my low understanding of the, um, what did you call it? I'm sorry, performance zoning. Performance zoning, zoning yeah. Um, my understanding of a historic district commission is that it works or should work, and that is up to the commission once you appoint those people. It is up to that commission to work within the zoning ordinances, whatever they may be, whether they're this performance zoning or whatever might be on the table, and the master plan, that they connect and they work together. But that only happens after you appoint those to, and whatever, I'd love to know more about what the, the process is that you had spoken to before you even get to appointing people. Um, but that's the commission, that's the um, council's decision to appoint people to this commission, and then that commission takes on the um, the the creation or the establishment of ordinances and the boundaries of that commission at that time. So, my understanding is that those regulatory ordinances through the commission, the historic district commission, would meld and work together with the current zoning and master plan. Okay. ideals so thank you thank you <laughs> uh, just in reference to your last question about shall I introduce myself yes you should okay um, I'm Jane Whitehead from uh, I'm uh, chair of the Laconia Heritage Commission I mean, we all know who you are, but oh, okay. <laughs> for the record. <laughs> um, in reference to that last question, yes, there can be overlapping zones. So you can have uh, a planning zone, and there can be a historic zone overlapping it. And there, uh, I guess, are rules are, are which are addressed first. But basically, the the goal is is for the various zones to uh, to communicate and to over uh, to overlap and to interact for the good of the community. And I wanted to add also that these historic dis districts where they occur tend to bring in economic development and tend to be good for the community. So that with a historic district working with a zoning uh, designation, uh, they could work together to bring in prosperity to the city. Certainly it preserves a pleasing character that would attract business uh, and would uh, draw people to the downtown, which at the moment is um, almost empty, uh, at least on the Pleasant, side, Pleasant Street side of, of town. And so the goal of the historic district is not only to put a damper on things, not to put a damper on things, but rather to bring up the the uh, economic possibilities of an area and to increase the value of, of a downtown. 
And I used the example last time I spoke to you about Portsmouth, which has a historic district in its very beautiful and vibrant commercial center. And Laconia could have the same um, quality of a downtown. And uh, a historic district, people have been worried about the restrictions about um, buildings within a historic district. It is not, a historic district is not an outdoor museum. It is uh, a district that designates not just the separate buildings, but the spaces in between and the fabric of the city, which now is like a torn cloth with a, a gaping hole uh, dragged through the middle of it, and we're afraid that it will widen with the demolition of St. Joseph's. I guess I, I'll have, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, the part of the plan that was submitted at um, the meeting that I missed, sorry about that, um, was uh, an out, outline of the historic uh, a proposed district. Are, are you familiar yes, with that? Yes, that was something that was, that was a plan that was drawn up in 1982. And it was very ambitious. It designated four different areas of the city uh, Lakeport, um, the northern part of the city, the southern part of the city, etc. But um, the de um, the area that we were planning to to choose as the beginning of the historic district it was simply the Church Street swath of the uh, northern Main Street plan, and I think Tara marked that out on the uh, sheet that she gave you in the packet that she gave you. Yeah, it's just a right part. Now. Yeah, it's just a part of that one part of one of those four one of districts. Those four proposals. Yeah. Just a, we can widen it uh, if this turns out to be a wonderfully successful thing and everyone loves it. We can make them <coughs> larger and we can expand it to Lakeport or the Weirs or to the residential areas around town. Thank you. Can I, I have a couple of questions for Jane. Just sure. to, uh, Jane, do you have a moment for a couple, maybe one question or maybe two? Uh, what, what I know you have extensive history um, um, and, and work throughout the states. Have you worked on historic districts before in, in your previous career? Not in the same sense, no. I'm, a, I'm an archaeologist. Yeah. So I have seen um, fabrics of communities, but I look at them from thousands of years after <laughs> after the fact okay um, yes so but but based on what what you do know of his uh, of, of historic overlay districts or historic districts have are, are you familiar with them being an impediment to economic growth of, of a community or a particular area that falls within that district no I don't have any specific information on that there is um, I do have um, a packet of information given out by the New Hampshire Preservation Alliance, and I believe you have a copy of that, which um, d does indicate that uh, for the, the large percentage of them, it is an economic boon. There may be some cases, but I don't know what they are specifically. Okay. But I think it's um, more probable that it will be a boon uh, by a large percentage than that it will be in any way. Uh, confining, particularly the swath that we've chosen, which is uh, largely not commercial. It's mostly public buildings, libraries, um, the church, the school, the train station. Okay. Th thank you very much. Thanks for your work on this as well. Thanks, David. It, it, it might be helpful just to indicate that the uh, proposed district that um, at least we received at the last meeting uh, includes the railroad station, the memorial library, uh, St. Joseph Church grounds, uh, coming down Church Street, around the post office, down sh Church Street, looks like it gathers in the old tavern, um, and then proceeds um, uh, in Veterans Square uh, to capture uh, the former restaurant, former church, um, and uh, the Congregational Church. I think that's what what the buildings actually capture on the proposed, at least one of the proposals 
the only one the, that I'm aware of for this district. Okay. Is there anybody else who would like to address? Hi, Pam Clark, president of the Laconia Historical and Museum Society. I wanted to speak tonight because the councilmen that are on this subcommittee, I think except for Mr. Bounds, um, was not on the council nine years ago when we lost the Hathaway House. And I was very pleased when Mr. Cheney at the council meeting last week asked to find out who the buyers are because we had a big issue with the buyers of the Dunkin' Donuts property um, who made promises that they didn't keep with a handshake, and I just want to <laughs> remind the council that this happened in the past and that uh, we hope that uh, something like this won't happen in the future, that we can work better with whoever the buyers might be. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, for the record, I'm Peter Spanos. I presently represent District 3 here in Laconia, uh, Belknap. Um, I just wanted to weigh in briefly on this topic of historical preservation. Some years ago, uh, we took a family trip and it encompassed visiting the so-called great cities of Europe, London, Paris, Rome, and the guide we were with had been to Europe many, many times, and he stated half jokingly, if you've seen one European capital, you've seen them all. That held true until we went to Berlin. Uh, the difference in Berlin was, as I'm sure everyone here knows, it was 98% destroyed in World War II. And I know that those Germans old enough miss that link to their past. And a monument like St. Joseph's Church really tells us a lot about who we are. It's a link to the past. And it also can point us to where we're going in the future. Uh, for these reasons and many more, I think the establishment of a preservation society is a very, very good idea in terms of ensuring that the, the buildings that we presently treasure will be here for future generations. Thank you. Hello, my name is Karen Sullivan, and I um, actually have a question. For, I know myself, I was at the meeting at the mill. I got there a little late, and I don't know how many other people here. Can, can it just be clarified exactly how establishing a historical district will help us with our goal of saving the church? Because I, I, I haven't seen that. Can, can, can we actually stop the destruction of the church if we establish this district? How does, how does that help our efforts? So that's my question. I, I'm going to try to answer that, <coughs> knowing that I really don't know the answer to it. <laughs> um, uh, I referred to that memo earlier uh, about how we go about establishing an historical commission and uh, an historical uh, district. Um, the value of having an historical commission um, in a scenario such as St. Joseph's Church would be that that commission would review any demolition permit, any uh, uh, building permit, and they would be review all building permits within the historic um, uh, division that was, the historic division that was created, and they would have the power uh, and the authority uh, to deny that building permit or that demolition permit, which would then trigger um, uh, or may trigger a, ser a series of appeals, uh, which would go to the ZBA first, 
And if everybody was not happy with um, the decision of the ZBA, would then go to the Superior Court. Um, and if people continued to be unhappy with that decision, would go to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. So that's the process that would that would be in place if there were an historical commission established. The problem is that there is no historical commission that's established right now in the city of Laconia. And to establish one is quite a process. First, you'd have to uh, develop articles consistent, and there's some of this is on the website, uh, with example, the Durham Historic Overlay District uh, or the Portsmouth Historic Overlay District. Um, which is uh, quite a task and just doesn't involve uh, designating a particular area as a historic division. Um, it requires uh, comments on organization, membership procedures. I mean, the document that I'm looking at is, and for Durham, is eight or nine pages, maybe, maybe 10 or 11 pages long. And that would be, have to be part of the original proposal for an historic commission, uh, along with the designation of an historic district to be put into place. Once that is done, either the council would make a recommendation to adopt uh, the overlay district, and if the council did that, it would then go to the planning board and the planning board would then undertake the process of reviewing it um, and taking a vote as to whether to schedule a public hearing on it. Um, then uh, once the planning board uh, schedules a public hearing on that uh, ordinance or that overlay district, Theoretically, although not in all cases, that would stop the clock. So if you get to the planning board and get a, a request for a public hearing on the historic commission, uh, at that point in time, if St. Joe's hadn't already gotten a um, demolition permit, if they hadn't done that, then they would have to await the outcome of the, or, of the ordinance. They would go to public hearing before uh, the planning board. The planning board would then make a recommendation to uh, the city council to either adopt it or not adopt it. It would come before the city council uh, again, um, and the city council I'm not sure whether they'd have to schedule a public hearing, but in all likelihood they would. There would be a public hearing on that, and the city council would then vote to adopt uh, the ordinance or not to adopt it. So for purposes of St. Joseph's Church, I'm of the view, and I'm listening, I'm of the view that this proposal comes too late in the process because you can't get it before, you can't get a finalized version of an overlay district, a proposed ordinance with respect uh, to, the, to um, the city council or to the planning board for at least 30 to 60 days. Um, and after that, you've got another 30 days. You've got, you've got to wait before it goes on. So if you read the, man, the manager's memo with respect to this, which I, I found enlightening, because a lot of times I just don't know what the I'm talking about. So um, even under the best uh, scenario, and that is that somehow we come up with an ordinance like this by next week so that the council can move to send it to the planning board. The planning board isn't going to get it until July, um, and even if they adopt it and send it out for public hearing, those are the time frames you're looking at. So from all practical purposes, uh, an historic commission, even if we start 
the process now and just put the pedal to the metal, we're not, we're not going to be able to do it in time to have any impact on St. Joseph's Church, which is why I think that the approach that the council is taking in addressing the diocese, who, what, when, where, and why, what are you doing, how are you doing it, please tell us, um, and then uh, efforts on the city council and all of you, um, which has been, it, it's just marvelous to see uh, people motivated like this and out caring about our community and about um, that cultural icon that's been part of the downtown since uh, the early 1900s. It's, it's just marvelous to see that kind of uh, support uh, and caring about this community. So keep it up. But uh, unfortunately, I think the time frames for an historic commission are just not there and um, not going to be available to be of any influence in terms of stopping the, the St. Joseph's um, demolition. And I think that has to be done um, on a different front. Not that it can't be done, but on a different front. Did you want to say something? I did. I, I, it concerns me that if we push this Historic District Commission uh, effort at this moment, what we may do is trigger a reaction from the diocese to beat the clock. I would rather try to deal directly with the diocese and hopefully come to a, an accommodation so that we can save that church. Uh, when I said before that I think they're two separate things, uh, I, I still feel that way, and, and although I would agree they are somewhat parallel, I don't want us to put a lot of effort into creating a district commission if it takes a, even a modicum of time away from the effort to save the church. I think that should be our first effort, our main effort at this point in time, and I think if we push the historic commission idea right now, we may push the diocese to move more quickly uh, or so quickly that we don't have time to, to try to negotiate with them. Thank you. Uh, it, it, if I may, with all due respect to my colleagues, the idea that we think a letter to the Diocese of Manchester is going to get some degree of transparency. <laughs> and I'm talking about my church. I'd be shocked if we got a letter back from the diocese saying, you're right, city of Laconia, let me share a little information, who the buyer is, estimated costs, and we're even going to let you know what we're going to do with the property. Up until this point, it's been nothing but obfuscation on behalf of the Manchester, the Diocese of Manchester as to was the property going to be posted for sale, when, for how long, and was there a potential buyer in the wings. Nothing has been straightforward and transparent in this process. Therefore, if we think we're just going to take a step back and not aggressively counteract what they're doing, which is to put an accelerated plan in place to demolish that church in July of this year so they can then consummate the sale, I think that's a foolish tactic on our part. What's, I, the, what's the better I, tactic? Un, what's, what? the, what's the better tactic? I understand uh, well, there are uh, there should but hold on. I understand there should be multiple tactics to take on this. Okay. One is through the diocese, a, a, a diocesan appeal, a Vatican appeal, work with canon law. There, there are a number of ways that we can approach this, but they have an accelerated timetable right now, and that timetable has nothing to do with our strong feelings about that church and these parishioners or the citizens of this city. They don't care. I'm convinced. Therefore, just I'm not going to be paralyzed because I'm afraid of what this diocese is going to do. We should pursue every available means to prevent the demolishment of that church. Uh, 
everybody here agrees with that. I'm not convinced we do because we're talking about taking a step back and making some sort of appeal, civil appeal to the diocese. No, uh, that may be one tactic, but I'll tell you, we should be doing this right now and we've got, it, this isn't perfect and I hate templates, but the fact is we have a roadmap of what we can do in the next week. And I think we should can strongly consider doing it. And you understand that if we follow that roadmap, we're not going to beat the clock? Do you get that? I'm not convinced that we won't be able to beat the clock, David, because I know there are tremendous lawyers out there that could seek an injunction that can find another alternative means to prevent. Once the, once the stones start to come out of that church and they take the, the windows out, it's done. It's over. What do you mean, They're, seek an injunction? Uh, we, we, I, I don't know what you mean. Uh, fair enough, and I'm happy to talk to you, to you offline about this. But if, what should we do, David? Because we can't get this done in time, we should just not do it, not give ourselves another opportunity to, to do the right thing? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying if we're going to establish an historic commission, we should do it right. We shouldn't do it haphazard. We shouldn't just throw it together and put it on the table because we want to beat Saint, the diocese to the, to, the, to the start line. That's not what we should do. The diocese do with would love to see us take our time and do something like that. I agree. That's just what no, they that's, want. No, I, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, what I'm saying is that the proposal that we have before us right now won't cut muster in terms of what we're trying to do. You, because of the timing, you say? No, because of what we need to do to put it together. That's, that's all I'm saying. But it, if, it, you could get, if you could get a firm proposal uh, for an ordinance for establishing a, a historic commission to the city council by June 10th of this year, I'm not <coughs> sure you can do it, but if you could... I'm all for doing whatever we can, and I think everybody here is all for, no, you got to let me finish. Uh, I think everybody here is all for doing whatever we can to prevent the demolition of St. Joseph's Church. But look at the time frames. I'm just asking you to look at it, all right? You get the time frames, assume you get a solid proposal to the council on June 10th. June 10th, the council makes the recommendation to the planning board, okay? The planning board doesn't meet until July. Um, and even assuming that you could get something out of there in the July-August time frame, those are, your, those are your nearest time dates for getting uh, into, into law a mechanism that will put down, it won't stop St. Joe's, and it may not stop them in the end, but that's the closest time frame you could get to putting a mechanism into place that would slow them down. So, And I'm just being realistic, uh, Andrew. I'm being I, just I, realistic. I, I appreciate that, but you haven't talked me out of why we can't do it. I don't want to talk you out of why well, we can't I, do I, it. Well, you, I haven't seen a... a, a Something that I haven't heard you say something that makes it seem impossible to do. It's no doubt a daunting task, and, and the city's been put in a very bad position here. But the, it doesn't. We, we've got to do something. There's got to be multiple lines of defense for that that church. Uh, you're creating an uh, an illusion. I, I, I can't say it any better. I'm all in favor. Let's take pull out all the stops. Put the pedal to the metal. Let's rock and roll. Let's go and get it. Let's do that. Uh, you're creating an illusion that that's going to work, and it's not. Uh, and I'm just being realistic. I'm telling you what the time frames are. You want to fool people about what can work and what no, can't? No. Uh, nobody's I, fooling just, anybody. You, you can, I, wanna, can I address the time frame Nobody's trying to fool anybody. Hearing. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You're losing control. <laughs> I'm getting it back. <laughs> I'll hear from Pam. 
This is uh, in my role of, of nine years as chairman of the Heritage Commission. There is a demolition process in this city, and the ch church is not going to be torn down in July. Once the demolition permit has been filed, which it has not yet, it's going to take at least 45 days of process and public hearing and everything else before they could go forward with that. So to me, that's the end of July. So this rush to get things done, it's, the, it's not going to be torn down in July. It's not, it's not a question of when they tore it down. It's, it's a question of what stops them. What's the roadblock? Because once they file for a permit to demolish St. Joe's, unless the historic commission is lawfully in place, and that means there's got to be a firm recommendation from the planning department uh, for a public hearing outlining specifically what the commission will do, what the district is, and what will happen. Until that happens, Nothing stops St. Joe's. You might slow them down for 45 days, but the commission doesn't have any authority, as you know, um, to, to say. I would like to think that the planning board and the zoning board, once they know what might be happening to the rest of this property, that they may step in and say, hey, we don't want that happening to this property, and they may stop it. Never mind the Heritage Commission and everything else. It, I, I, the planning board can't do anything in that regard, and no, neither can the zoning board. It's not that they can come in and exercise jurisdiction and just say, we, we don't like this project, you can't do it. There's a process. They're going to have to go through a permitting process. Exactly. Yeah, so uh, it's not like the zoning board or the planning board can just, like, make decisions without something before them. It, it doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen that because they have the 45 delay uh, that that stops the process. It might stop it for 45 days and assume that... But it gives people a chance to work on something. Uh, <laughs> right? I, I want a chance to work on something all the time. That's not, that's not my issue. I mean, issue. You're, you're telling us and by I, June 10th. I, you know, I feel like we should have more time than by June 10th to come up with something. I'm, I'm giving you the time frames on the most expeditious manner in which we could get something, a commission in place that would actually have some teeth in terms of the permitting process that St. Joe's would have to go through. I'm just telling you the, the legal rea realities of that. I'm not trying to discourage you from fighting. I'm not trying to discourage anybody for, <laughs> for keeping St. Joe's. Okay. Did you want to say, do you want to complete what you had to say? I feel like I've said my piece. Okay. Thank you. Back. Sorry. It's okay. Um, I do have a question, and then I just want to ask. So if things go, I'm a dreamer, so let's just go with me on this one. <laughs> we get something to you next week. Mm -hmm. The process starts. Is there some reason why the zoning board can't? Is there, there's no rules for emergency meetings? There's no, no we can't do any of that. You can't call can't, anything can't do, emergency. You can't, you can't call anything. anything. No, you can't do anything. You can't come sooner. You no, can't, you can't the show up at board six can't reach out of seven. And say, We're going to stop St. Joe's right now. They no, can't no, no. Do it. I'm saying in regards to Historic District Commission and the creation of one, establishment of one, mm -hmm. you said that the zoning board has to meet. No. The zoning, the zoning, no. what did you say? The planning. The planning board, excuse me. Come from the council to the planning okay, board. Okay, so the planning board can never meet outside of its actual yes, it monthly can. date. Yes, it And can. what are the statutes for the planning board meeting on those dates? I, I don't know. Outside what of its own date. Is, is it 10 days? Five, what's, the, what's the notice? Do you know? I want to say it's, um, it's either 24 or 48 hours notice to post a special meeting. Um, on, bu on business days. My dream is becoming a reality. And uh, certainly that certainly that would be the... Sorry, Scott. Certainly that would be the purview of the planning board chair and members to decide to do that. Decide you certainly could that. request to hold a special meeting, but it would be their purview as to calling that. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much for answering that, uh, Scott. Um, so then I'm just going to pull at some heartstrings here for just a few seconds. I would like anyone who was I'm here. With you. I know yeah. you are. I'm I know. I know. I'm just <laughs> gathering the crowd. Uh, Peter Caragiannis stood on that front lawn with a wrecking ball 
There's never a last minute in my mind. That was the last minute, and that building is still standing. I think it would do us a good, I think it would do us good to remind us ourselves of that and that I would really, really encourage you, give me the challenge, give me the paper, give me the go ahead, and I'll show back up here in about a week or whatever date you give me and I'll be ready with whatever you need. But I would like the challenge to be given to us and I'd like to be shown, I would like to show back up here with what you need and make this go a little faster than, than what you're saying you think it could go, because I think it can move pretty fast. And I understand where you're coming from, that going at it and this quickly could give you something that's um, maybe not thought out properly or thought out enough or hasn't been, you know, gone through well enough. Mm, but I'm not going to put the people who are working on that under the bus before we give them the chance to do it. If it comes to you and it's not good enough and it's not whatever enough, then you have that chance to say no to us, but give us the chance. Let's get this rolling. Let's get something into play. You've just told us, Scott just confirmed, that the planning board can meet quicker. And for me, what you were talking about, that planning board meeting seemed to be the big bump in the road. As well, a reminder of the Heritage Commission being able to place a 45-day process on that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. What that, that just doesn't matter in the time frames. I, but that's okay. Okay. I understand what you're saying. And then finally, I would just remind that we are not looking at just the church, that I think this plan should continue on. We're not, we are here. This was the catalyst. The church was the catalyst. But there are several others out there that I just, I don't want to take up your time again in about a month when they're taking down the train station or they've decided that um, there's, something else is being sold and they're going to take that down. I would like to be able to start this commission now and be able to work on uh, saving what we have in this city now. And now is the time to start that process. We're real lucky and we do this real fast and the planning board is gracious to see us a little sooner than later, then we have a real chance at making it happen. And I'd love to take you guys in my dream. <laughs> My name is Joyce Donahue, and I live on Pleasant Street. And um, <clears throat> Peter Brunette, as you know, is the chairman of the planning board. And um, I may not be, there may be others here that understand that um, they are poised to help us if they can. So, um, and thank you, Mr. Hosmer, and all of you who are not raining on the parade. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, uh, Tom Barker, live on Lane Road up in Ward 1. And uh, I just, I mean, the people that have stood up here to speak are so eloquent and um, some of what I'll say is just uh, repeating <clears throat> in different words what they've had to say. Um, uh, Mr. Spanos was really described uh, something that's been going through my mind, as many, many things have been going through my mind since I heard about the possible destruction of, of that beautiful, <clears throat> beautiful church. Uh, we were just over in France, my wife and I, for three weeks, and we were walking around aimlessly. <laughs> and uh, every little village uh, we went through, we'd go into the church. They don't lock the churches over there. You can wander in. And uh, we also went to some of the famous cathedrals as well. But really, uh, the experience was incredible. And I say that as someone uh, brought up in the Roman Catholic uh, tradition, uh, no longer a practicing Catholic, but it's <laughs> certainly in my DNA. And uh, I'm very grateful uh, to have been raised in that tradition. And um, so one of the 
<coughs> experiences I had in these old churches was that I felt at home because <laughs> of the, the experience of, of people going to mass through the ages, centuries, and decades in a, in a building. So it's much more in a building than a building. So there's that piece of it. Uh, and then the piece of it of the, you know, looking at the work and craftsmanship that went into these buildings and uh, the dedication and just, it's, it's really mind blowing, uh, at least it was for me and my wife. Uh, so when I think about this building being torn down, I mean, that's, that's uh, it's, it's a travesty, it would be a sin. And so there's all that. And then the historic district and uh, the benefit it would have to the city, um, I believe it would be very beneficial to, uh, to have this in place because Laconia has many assets and some of those assets, a lot of those assets are the older buildings that we have. And um, I think it would be, it would be awful if, if the city government didn't do everything, any option, and not be run by fear of, you know, maybe something will happen if we do this. So I say go for it with the uh, historic district. Anything, anything we can do to forestall or, and, or prevent, which is our goal, uh, the destruction of this beautiful building, um, uh, I, say, I say go for it. Everything that we can do has to be done. So thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to comment? Now it's 6.52, just hold on, I'm, I'm not gonna cut you off. It's 6.52, we've got a seven o'clock meeting. I wanna hear everybody. Um, maybe we can take a few <coughs> extra minutes at, at seven to just figure out where we're gonna go with this. But so I, I urge you to be, be brief. Don't be incomplete, but be brief as you can. Jane Wood, I live in Ward 3, and I also wanted to say that I think it's absolutely worth giving it the best try that we can because there may be other buildings sooner than we would ever imagine that might be affected. So to just decide we don't have time I think is completely wrong. The other thing I wondered when you're talking about different ways uh, of looking at the situation, has there been any thought or discussion about eminent domain? Just one. I'm Catherine Tokars, Ward 6, yay. Um, <laughs> we all love Laconia, obviously. We have a choice. Those of us that weren't born here and raised, we had a choice. We could have lived in Meredith, we could have lived in Guilford, we could have lived in Belmont. We could be moving to those places, but no, we are here. We love Laconia. We will do anything we can to make her a better place. I, I appreciate all of your work, uh, what you've done, um, but I'm begging you to please think this through. Let us help you. There are so many people that would help you to do this right to get it right the first time so that we don't have to come back here again. But it's so important for us to maintain the character of this beautiful city. We're not just a city on the lakes. We are a city of people, a city of education, a city of buildings that are so important to us. Thank you. Uh, Jane Whitehead again. I have a, a request, and I don't know whether this is something it, it, within your purview or not, but the Heritage Commission receives applications for demolition, for a demolition permit. 
what is not on that application form is what the use of the build what the use of the area will be once the building is demolished sometimes it's obvious but for the most part it's not and I think we would like to know that um, I think that that's an important piece of information to be put on the application form we don't need to know the specifics of the plumbing and the setbacks and that kind of thing what we do need to know is what the purpose of the demolished um, pl uh, uh, building's plot will be. And uh, could that be added, or somehow could that form be revised to include that? So that when the application comes before us for the demolition of the church, we know what it's going to be used for. Uh, Linda Normandon, I too support uh, moving forward with the application to establish the Historic uh, Division Commission because it will be for more than just St. Joseph's and trying to save that. Uh, I too wanted to raise the question about taking the church by eminent domain based on the cost of it to be demolished. Seems like a fair value to s establish it and I didn't know if the if you're, this group is able to consider that as a, another option to try to save the church. Thank you. I just, uh, real quick, this, I'm Paulette Lachlan, I'm in Ward 3. Um, I uh, just want to say my most important goal in this, at this point, I'm very much in favor of the District Commission is that St. Joseph's Church be saved. I, I would defer to those wiser than me, wiser than I am. I, I feel like I'm listening to all my friends and neighbors here and telling me what they can do, and I, I respect that. I listen to the council here, and I, they saying, well, maybe that's not the best way. So I'm just going to appeal to you as people who deal with regulations and city ordinances and laws and all those things that are in your way, I would like to see the church saved. That's my goal. Um, I would like to see a, a commission set up, whether it be now or in six months. I'd like to see that done so that this doesn't happen again. But my foremost important thing right now is that St. Joseph's be saved. So that's... <laughs> My name is Dominique Vasquez Banas. I'm on Taylor Street. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I think it is prudent to um, try to catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. And that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. I just wanted, I forgot to thank Mr. Cheney for what you're doing and um, hopefully you won't stop your effort so we can all do this at the same time. Thank you. If I may, uh, as the uh, only Scotch Protestant in this group <laughs> and uh, thankfully the only non-lawyer in this committee, um, my effort is to buy the church, to be perfectly frank with you. I. I we got to find a way to save that church. I, uh, it, this isn't a religious thing for me. It's a historic building that needs to be saved. And I think, we, I, I understand what uh, Councillor Hosmer is saying and the fact that, that he identifies a, a lack of, of uh, Uh, effort on the part of the church to be honest with us all is what concerns me the most and the reason why um, I'm concerned that if we start this process uh, the, the two attorneys discuss the, the amount of, of really bright lawyers who could get injunctions and whatever and I think it You didn't hear me say that Well, <laughs> yeah <laughs> But I would remind you the church has some bright lawyers as well. 
And I don't want to get into that. I want to find out what they want, what the cost of demolishing the church is. And the day that I find that out, I'll make a motion here that we find the money and buy the damn thing to save it, period. End of story. Uh, and I'll worry about all the other stuff. And I don't want to see one old building torn down if we can avoid it. But I want to see this done. And I don't think, I don't want to put a lot of effort into a, a myriad of, of things. I want to just focus on the church. Then I'll, then I'll deal with the historic commission. Okay, it's past seven, so make it quick. Okay, just very quickly. Um, there is a gentleman here in the room who has um, suggested that perhaps this could be, um, an analogy could be drawn between this, what the church is proposing to do, and taking something out of current use. This is not, uh, I'm stealing this gentleman's thunder, but they've enjoyed the tax benefit of this since 1929. And um, so maybe they should have to pay something right now uh, for taking it out of current use. Um, okay, thank you. So anyway. Okay. Well, I hope I'm not cutting anybody short, but I'm going to close the public hearing uh, at this point in time. Uh, my, my only suggestion is um, that we somehow continue this to next week because I don't think there's a proposal we can put before the council tonight with respect to this. Um, ask the city manager if he can do it to come up with some kind of an ordinance in the time frames that we're talking about. Um, I don't know if that's possible. Um, <clears throat> I understand that Ms. Shore has volunteered her efforts to uh, put together a proposal. So, uh, can everybody hear me? Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, you've offered, Ms. Shore, you've offered uh, your efforts to put together some kind of a cohesive proposal. Uh, I'm willing to consider doing that um, and get it before, try to get it before the council. Uh, on June 10th, I don't think anybody's saying, you know, stop trying. Nobody's saying that. I'm just telling you how difficult it is. So uh, I don't know if we can do that, but my suggestion is we continue this hearing. What have we got scheduled for 6 o'clock next Monday? We have our final budget presentation at 6 o'clock before the regular meeting. Okay. How long do you anticipate that that's going to be? That's going to run from 6 to 7. Okay. 5.30? 5.30? I think 5 would be good. 5? Okay. We'll do a, we'll do a um, subcommittee hearing um, at 5 <coughs> next Monday, June 10th. Is that right? Um, and hopefully we'll have some kind of proposal that anybody can consider. Uh, I, again, I, I'm, I'm not raining on anybody's parade. Uh, I'm just trying to be practical here. So, Mr. Chair, if I could? Yeah. Just on a, on a purely technical basis, if we're looking to have the city council, full city council, take action potentially next Monday night, I think it would be fair to all members of the public if whatever may be presented was somehow had an opportunity to be aired or presented or at least publicly known prior to five o'clock Monday night because then you're asking the city council to take action on something that nobody has seen. Typically, and it's not that the council can change the rules, typically our agendas are completed and finalized with background information on the website available here in a paper copy for anybody to view the proposal by the close of business no later than Thursday afternoon. So if we are gonna work on something this week, happy to put a placeholder on the seven o'clock meeting agenda, but I would strongly encourage that we have whatever is planning on being presented to the best of our ability be available by Friday afternoon so folks could take the opportunity to read it, review it, potentially offer comment if you're looking for the council to take 
some kind of a definitive action to move well, it to the planning board on that Monday night. So that's my only thought just from a, a technical administrative end of it. Uh, and I agree because I think we should be transparent about this and everybody should know what we're doing and what the proposal is. There's nothing to prevent the city council from calling a special meeting with respect to this um, at the June 10th um, meeting. We can call a special meeting anytime we want for the purpose of addressing this. Uh, and I don't want to be incomplete about this. This is my frustration uh, with it, uh, with this proposal, is that it's, right now, it's incomplete. Uh, and I, I want it to be complete and as thorough as we can do it. Go ahead. I, I, I would hope we could find another night because uh, on Monday the 10th, we also had the Baldock uh, presentation of the plaque for this room. So 5:30. at 5.30, so we're, you know, we're okay. going to cut ourselves really short. I'd rather you picked another night. I, I think Andrew would agree that we can be here. Well, give me another suggestion. You are correct that the city council can call a special meeting. So if there's the will of the council to call a special meeting, again, allow me just to um, reference state law to see if it's 28, not sorry, 24 or 48 hour notice on that. Um, we can find a room. If something happens to be in this room that can't be relocated, we can locate somewhere else. So if the council wanted to meet on Tuesday the 11th to continue this, and based on what outcome, try to request that the city council hold a special meeting later that week on the 13th, as an example. Timeline, I think that works if it works with everyone's schedule. And then if it were to get to that step and something were approved to go on the planning board, then the request would be made for the planning board to look to schedule a special meeting. So, so would we make the request for a special meeting at the June 10th meeting? I, I would say, to give the public notice, I would say right now if you're looking to meet at I'm just picking out 5 o'clock on June 11th. That gives us an opportunity to get information together so that hopefully we're doing this right to the best of our ability on a limited crunch time. And by allowing Monday to get information out, there is a Tuesday newspaper. Something could be posted um, for background material for that committee meeting for that Tuesday. And if folks who want to get up to speed would have... 24 hours to review what was going to be discussed. Well, what's to stop us with what, the time frames in terms of this? We can do this on the 13th too, can't we? We can do it on, one, on the Wednesday the 13th, yes? Uh, Wednesday's the 12th. 12th, whatever that is. I, I can't do when Wednesday's not good, but I, I, I would suggest, consistent with what Scott has proposed, that we meet on uh, Tuesday the 11th at 5 o'clock, the subcommittee here, this, this committee, excuse me, to work on it. And then I, I would look at Thursday the 13th as a possibility for us it's 24 with is that enough I, but if you if you does if you if we were to meet on the 11th can we meet on the 13th and, and yes and is that wise does it give us enough time to well, I think the effort would be to try to have a draft ordinance and a district outlined and published as agenda material by that Monday the 10th, even though the committee's not meeting. Okay. And therefore, there's 24 hours before the meeting at 5 o'clock on the 11th for people to either go online and look at it or if there's newspaper coverage and that type of stuff. And then out of that meeting on Tuesday, it could be requested that a special meeting is held and you have council rules on how a special meeting can be um, scheduled, I want to say it's by the city manager's request through the mayor or that any three or four counselors can petition a meeting in writing as long as we follow state law for the 24 hours advance notice. So I, I think one way or the other, a committee meeting on Tuesday could lead to a special city council meeting on a Thursday if that was a desire of the council. And if for some reason we didn't, we, we weren't prepared after Tuesday's meeting, we could cancel the 13th and that would correct it would inconvenience people in scheduling but it wouldn't affect us correct okay to get five so or six i guess what i'm hearing is that I'll, we'll take a motion to continue this hearing to tuesday uh at five o'clock tuesday the 11th at five o'clock 
Okay, all those in favor? Okay. That pass. Don't want the business be coming before the committee. I, I adjourn the, the committee here. Oh.